Okay, hello everyone, welcome back and I welcome Dennis Russell Davis. Thank you that you're here on my channel tonight. I have the pleasure to perform Böse Zellen by Thomas Larcher with you here in the beautiful Gewandhaus in Leipzig. Maybe not all of my YouTube followers know who you are, so maybe you want to introduce yourself quickly. Who are you and what do you do? I'm a conductor and pianist. I have the good fortune of being chief conductor of the MDR Radio Symphony Orchestra Leipzig, also Philharmonie Bruno in the Czech Republic. And I enjoy a really wonderful uh, musical existence with these two great orchestras. Wonderful. Yeah, this history of this piece that we play today is called Böse Zellen. It's actually dedicated to you. Our friend Thomas uh, has written this many, many years ago, and you've probably already done it quite a few times. Can you tell us about the history of the piece and how it has been composed and, and what the first performances were like? Thomas was uh, the pianist originally mm -hmm. for the work. Uh, later, uh, I recorded it with the Munich Chamber Orchestra, and uh, Till Fellner was the soloist. And since several years you and I have done it together, Thomas is very lucky to have two such wonderful pianists who play this work. Mm -hmm. And I think by doing it here and having it broadcasted, and uh, I hope that uh, other people will catch on, that this is a really wonderful work. Actually, today I've just recorded a little uh, video explaining how exactly to do all the preparation in the piano, because that's very special about it. Um, the different colors with mm -hmm. the wedges and the, the steel ball, etc. But that's mostly from the pianistic part, but also for the orchestra, it's quite complex. And although you're an expert uh, also on contemporary music, but you're also conducting Bro Buchner, for example, um, tonight, this is very complex and also through the rehearsals with all the, the bar changes. How do you manage to hold all the orchestra together and, and how do you lead through rehearsals so that everyone is on the same page? Well, first of all, the quality of the piece mm. does most of the work. Um, it's important to have a concept in terms of the rhythmic structure and how to deal with the, as you put it, the measure changes and the meter changes. It is quite tricky in many places, but the music makes such wonderful sense that it's not really a problem for good musicians to identify with this music, and they do. Yeah, especially the, also the dramatic quality of the piece is, mm -hmm. is, is, is very great. And we have been talking about, about this uh, last time we had dinner about this bar in 7 8, which is da 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 or da 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 da. And um, how do you come to terms with, with these things? How do you prepare actually? Because you said you recently realized that you want to structure the, the bar in a different way. How does that happen in your, in your preparation process? Well, uh, in this particular case, what you're referring to, uh, Thomas did a rhythmic structure which has an ele element of fear, four followed by three, and I realized, uh, f he actually, no, he composed it the other way around, mm -hmm. three followed by four, <laughs> and I noticed just simply by listening to it that if I turned it around, it was easier for me and easier for the musicians. So I've already talked to Thomas, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to work on having a new set of material made eventually and we'll this will be taken care of and that uh, it'll make it easier for everyone yes of course talking about music is <laughs> always very difficult but just the last idea we will probably also blend in a little bit from the uh, rehearsal but in the very last movement everything is taken out of the piano and we have this suddenly very pure and harmonic sound how do you see that ending is it is it a is it a positive ending or is it something that gives hope or is it something that is um, just revealing something that has been hidden before in the in the music there's a majestic aspect to thomas's mm -hmm. harmonic language and i think it reflects the mountains that he lives in I think it really reflects Tyrol, it reflects the great spaces, the distances, the high peaks. I feel that it's music of the place that he lives in, as are most of the pieces he's composed. He doesn't do it intentionally, but he's very similar to Anton Bruckner in that sense. That it's really hard for me to imagine that particular music being composed in another place. <laughs>
Yeah, now I actually learned something in the interview. Thank you. Very great. And um, yeah, actually, uh, we did one piece of him called The Living Mountain, mm -hmm. where he's aware of all this process. All right. But it's true. Yeah, it's, it's also all the sounds he produces are very nature-like. So thank you for being here. My pleasure. And I'm looking I'm forward looking, to the too. performance. I'm looking forward to it. And thank you too much. for watching.